Hello, good morning. In this lecture, we will be discussing as to how to evaluate the interaction energy in two electron system under JJ coupling. Consider two electrons, their orbital angular momenta are respectively L1 and L2 and spin angular momenta are respectively S1 and S2. If we are to imagine the possible interactions between L and S of these two electrons, there can be six type, uh, different types of interactions and uh, thereby six gamma factors to be evaluated. We have listed out the six possible interactions here and the respective gamma factors. An important point to be remembered at this juncture is that in JJ coupling, L1 and S1 interact to give J1 and L2 and S2 interact to give J2 and these individual total angular momenta give the resultant angular momenta of the system. And so in JJ coupling, the magnitude of the gamma factors will be like this. Gamma 3 and gamma 4 will be larger in magnitude because this interaction is more stronger in JJ coupling and gamma 1 and gamma 2 will be lesser in magnitude compared to gamma 3 and gamma 4. Comparing gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3 and gamma 4, the other two gamma factors are extremely small and they can as well be neglected. Generally in JJ coupling the term value is depicted like this J1 and J2 within simple parenthesis with a subscript capital J. The relation for gamma 3 is like this and for this part you can apply the cosine law and you can write a term like this in the square bracket as given in the square bracket and for gamma 4 2 the relation is like this and you can apply cosine law and obtain a relation like this but for gamma 1 and gamma 2 the relations are like this but for this part you are not able to apply cosine law directly this is because the angles that we are dealing with here are not fixed they are variable. So all we can do is we can express an average value of cosines of these angles and you can express it in terms of product of cosines of fixed angles. So this is what you can write for average value of cosines of S1 star, S2 star and L1 star, L2 star. Now to get values for this part on the LHS, you need to plug in values for each of these individual cosines. Now since each of these individual cosines are fixed, I mean the angles are fixed, so you can apply cosine law for these cosines. So that is what we have written here. We have written five relations involving cosines of the angles mentioned here in this relation. So you can obtain substitutions for this, for this, for every cosine mentioned on the RHS of this equation. As of now we plug in values for cosines of S1 star J1 star, S2 star J2 star and cosine of L1 star J1 star and L2 star J2 star for this term cosine J1 star J2 star as of now we are not going for a substitution and if we are to write gamma 1 plus gamma 2 this is what we will get you can just check it for yourself and sorting this term to arrive at an expression like this a1 beta1 plus a2 beta2 
J1 star J2 star cos J1 star J2 star. So you can just evaluate for yourself what are exactly beta 1 and beta 2. And for this part J1 star J2 star cos J1 star J2 star you can very well apply cosine law. And for the initial part mentioned in the simple bracket you can just write that part as another constant capital A. So this is the relation that you obtain for gamma 1 plus gamma 2. Now that you have obtained the relation for all the gamma factors to be evaluated, we shall consider a specific example for obtaining the energy level diagram in the case of a PS electron system. For the P electron L1 is 1, S1 is half and J1 can take two values 3 by 2 and 1 by 2. For the S electron L2 is 0, S2 is half and J2 can take only the value half. Now for the resultant J value, you can see that there are two different possibilities. 3 by 2 can couple with 1 by 2 to give you 2 and 1 and half can couple with half to give you 1 and 0. So the possible terms will be this, all these combinations, half half with a J of 0 half half with a j1, 3 by 2 half with j1 and 3 by 2 half with j2. So these are the four possible terms and uh, let's see what the gamma factors are. Gamma 3 for these two levels. Gamma 3 is given by this relation and you see that for these two levels j1 is the same, it's 3 by 2, right and gamma 3 will be A3 by 2. Now for gamma 3 of half half 1 and half half 0, again J1 is half, it's the same for both these levels and you can get a gamma 3 of minus A3. Now gamma 4, gamma 4 is given by this equation and you see that the only thing involved is J2 star square. Okay, so if you are to look at all the four possible terms, you see that there is no variation in J2. J2 is always half for all the four levels. So gamma 4 for all the four levels would be the same and you get a value of 0 on evaluation. But gamma 1 plus gamma 2 will be different for all the four levels because it depends on capital J. Right, it depends on capital J as well as J1 and J2. So gamma 1 plus gamma 2 will be different for all the four levels and for this level 3 by 2 half 2 gamma 1 plus I am sorry gamma 1 plus gamma 2 will be different for all the four levels and for this level gamma 1 plus gamma 2 is 3a by 4. For gamma 1 uh, plus gamma 2 of 3 by 2 half with j1 you get a value of minus 5a by 4 and for half half 1 you get a value of a by 4 and for this thing half half 0 you get a value of minus 3a by 4. So your energy level diagram would look something like this. Where the individual levels go that is depicted by gamma 3 and Gamma 3 was A3 by 2 for these two set of levels and Gamma 3 was minus A3 for these two set of levels. Now how these two individual levels are spaced within the doublet that would be given by Gamma 1 plus Gamma 2 and that is what we have shown here. And always higher j value level, higher j value level would be the upper level and lower j value level would be the lower level. Okay, following the same rule over here, half half 1 will be the upper level, half half 0 would be the lower level. I hope uh, everything was clear.
Thank you all.